Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome welcome back to episode 4 of this industrial tutorial, industrial know-how. Um, I've lost all my old build stuff since it's been a while since I recorded and uh, I've gone ahead and redone it. So I thought I'd just do a quick recap of the initial three systems, like as quickly as I could, and just kind of to show you, or you know, give you maybe a little practice setting it up. So welcome back, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna recap the three things we did before, which was the furnace, and uh, Let's see, the sorter, which is going to sort in all these boxes. This is the drop point. And uh, the pooler. So those are the three things we went over. And this one, I'm going to, yeah, so I'm going to recap all those. And then I'm going to show you how to integrate the furnace into the drop box so that it's not on its own system. And the only thing you've got to do is throw everything in the drop box and not have to, like, separate your ore into a separate section. And this is also going to give it... A place to, uh, to put the ore back like when it's done smelting you get frags and, and the sulfur and stuff it's also going to put it back into the drop system so that it sorts to the right place after it's done smelting whereas before it just went back into its closed box right it's one single box all right so let's just do that first i'll go i'm going to go ahead and get the closed furnace system up you can see i've got some uh i've got three furnaces kind of put in a triangle i've left a spot for a refinery we already got our battery hooked up I want to just uh, set up a few things real quick here, electrical wise, that we're going to need. Uh, you know, I'll assume you have some electrical stuff going on, but I'm just going to put my electric drops like here. I'm just going to use two branches. There's a lot of different ways to do this, but branches are going to allow us to uh, pretty easily split off for these. Because, okay, one thing you can do that's kind of nice is if you want to use three furnaces or some, you know, these electric furnaces, they each take three watts, which is convenient. Uh, three power because you can split off and branch with these splitters these splitters um, They divide your power. So if you give one of them uh, 10 power It's going to use you know one power for the splitter itself and then it's going to split off the final nine We need which is exactly three. So it's a, it's just a nice way to wire up uh, three so you usually want some amount of furnaces three six or nine being a good number because of this particular factor uh, but that's totally up to you i i tend to like to do well it depends on the wipe if it's kind of a slower wipe where uh you know three is sufficient but if you want to go a little faster you can expand six or nine it doesn't really matter we're doing six here it's a pretty even you'll find with that with like six it's uh it's plenty sufficient like it'll these things cook stuff really fast. It's going to be a hard time keeping up with nine, so it might just end up being a waste of power to make too many. But that's a whole other topic, uh, really. But just make sure you get these wired into the power and not into the uh, turn on or something. The turn on is a whole other thing. We're not really going to use turn on. It's not that useful. Oops, I just accidentally hooked it up to it. It's not that useful of a button for me in general. You can... Like do some clever stuff with it, maybe save a little power here and there, but it's generally just not worth the power savings to integrate a whole on-off system on these, unless you got like a million of them, and they use like a hundred watts or something, you know. And then you might want to do that. But all right, so we got that hooked up, and we just need, of course, a uh, conveyor to push to them. I'm gonna try to get it within their block. That's very nice. And I like to do red for these. Um, let's think about this here. I want the final out one to be this one here. So I'm gonna like start down here. I think. Uh, and kind of loop counterclockwise at first. Yeah, we'll just stay counterclockwise. I'm not really caring too much about how these pipes look. But another thing I didn't really show in the video, but when you're placing these, place the back one first and put the adapter on it. That way, especially if you're doing it in a triangle like this, that way you know you have the space to place the others because you can block the adapter and have to pick them up and stuff. That makes sense. All right, so and then the final out, of course, going to this box. So just use this resource box and uh, to the end of the resource box. And of course, we want this um, to be pulling from the box. And there's there's our closed loop loop system hooked back up. Now another kind of a nice thing about these branches is the very last power outs. All the power outs they're kind of dynamic, where they pull the amount that is pulling. Uh, where the left side, the branch out, you set it and it always pulls that. So this like always uses 10 watts plus one for itself. So now it always uses 11 watts and whatever this is pulling as well. So this very last one is actually pretty good for hooking up these conveyors since you can just keep adding to it. And as long as you have enough power, it'll just use that amount more rather than making another branch and setting it. And every time you add a new conveyor, 
you have to change the number that can get really tedious so it's nice to put this on a dynamic tap um, I don't know if I mentioned that before but I think I may have alluded to it so uh, that's kind of a whole other electrical topic that maybe I'll get into later because but yeah just you gotta have sufficient power and that just dynamically ramps up without you having to adjust anything just hook up more all right very nice very nice so now that this is on and these should have power um, we can turn them all on if uh, if you have furnaces that need wood you just use an igniter and a button if there's a bunch of them I'll talk more about that later actually I want to get to that really soon I want to talk about the charcoal factory it's really important because once you have a bunch of these electric furnaces and it's, re it's really nice for smelting ore but what about like um, the charcoal like how are you gonna get the charcoal you need some kind of way and you have to micromanage it throwing wood in and stuff and uh, I'm gonna show you how to do that but that will be next first I want to teach you how to integrate this system so now this button should just turn on all these and all the bottom ones not the top ones I guess where do we need this thing to turn them all on if they are set up like this Pick up that guy okay maybe we go igniter right here I wonder if this will do it button okay yeah that looks like it'll do it anyway kind of a side point but this is kind of a cool thing uh, really nice for other furnaces not the be best for electrical since they're typically on all the time anyway but it's uh, it's a nice button to have all right so now we can turn this on uh, we can start putting ore in there and it's back to normal i'll just do a little sample of like i don't know this high wall here throw that in there keep in mind you can also throw like cans in and stuff like that um cans mix some like if you're just eating bean cans and you're eating beans and you're desperate for metal you can throw it in there it will go to the furnaces i think they're all full of high coal now um so i nope, someone went in there but yeah that'll get you some frags so just uh, you know a little pro tip all right so now that all works um that's that's fine we're gonna put this in our drop box actually because uh, that'll be cool to show later all right so so when you come in the door, you come in for mining, you throw all your ore in here, and it, it does its thing. That's that's a nice system to have, and that can be good enough for most people. But we are definitely going to continue. All right, let's do the recap of this. All right, so there's a lot of sorting to do. This is the drop box. These are all, like, the sort boxes. I think there's 15 of them. I got wood, fuel, uh, car parts, which are tip in the component category, tools for toolbox, stone. Uh, what else we got? We got... Uh, armor up here or clothing we've got components so i'm just gonna put adapters on all of them we got weapons here ammo um we got a water box one which i think i'm going to use just for food for now but more about that later because you don't actually even need a food one there's something cool you can do um depending on how you set it up we've got an electric box which i'm probably going to be set into construction a resource box frag box um a handle with care box which i think i'm going to is going to be the boom sulfur uh, charcoal I don't have every category or anything and a lot of these you notice like sulfur charcoal frags res they're all resource categories so we're gonna be splitting that up because uh, putting the resource category all in one thing is not really too good unless you have a gazillion boxes daisy chain for it all right but uh, just a, just a thing I'd, I'd rather separate rate out the resources like that I think most people like doing that get the first aid we so we got plenty of stuff um, but uh, we just want a conveyor for each category. So one watt per category is the standard electrical cost on this, as usual. Um, I'm gonna put, no, I'll show that later. Uh, auto upkeep TC, we will, I wanna get into that a little bit too. It's actually kind of just the puller. You basically just hook up a puller to it and set what you want, but I'll do that maybe this this time too because it's it's super nice it basically means your tc has unlimited slots rather than it's limited slots and that's kind of good sometimes especially with high upkeep bases or if you got a lot of externals you can like, hook up these things to all externals so that's that's another thing but i figured i'd mention it all right so we got a conveyor to each now we need to uh we need to pull in from this drop box so there might be a split off of drop boxes eventually so we're just going to start out with a a uh, combiner here and i guess we'll put it here's fine or, i don't know i'm just gonna put it in the whole way all right there's the drop box combiner right now we only have one drop box so it's out it's just going to go to we'll just do the first one 
I often like to make these blue. Um, it's just kind of the symbol or the color for what comes in from the Dropbox blue. Blue for, I don't know, I guess the way I remember is it's like, it's, it's a, you know, blue's kind of like the color of getting choked out or whatever. And um, it kind of chokes all the items into one point, you'd say. So anyway, that's, that's the reasoning. I couldn't really think of anything better. Um, but I've been trying to color code these some. And now this would want to go to each one of these. And you should know how to do that instinctively by now. You put a splitter if you've got multiple. Because you've got to, and you need one splitter every few boxes. So that can be for those two, that can be for that one. We'll just go around clockwise order. Every two you need, need one. If you've only got one uh, thing to hook up, just leave one for it anyway, because you might expand later. This will be for these ones. Uh, this is getting a little tricky. I guess we got two up here at the top, two at the bottom again. So I'll uh, we'll just hop up here and do that. Not making it perfect, not worrying about that too much. I forgot to put conveyors on these ones. Conveyor here, conveyor here. Got them up there though, okay. And then a couple here. You notice the way I place these boxes too, there's room to put two more in like a perfect square formation, but you won't be able to get to the back boxes. So that could be maybe an expansion later once you have this all hooked up and working well. Uh, so there's room for expansion on these boxes, but you can't get to the back boxes. And that's actually kind of fine with this system in the long run. That's why I did that way. Okay, so now that we got all the splitter hooked up, let's keep, uh, let's keep adding some blue lines because we want this first out to go to the first splitter. We're going to keep using out three to go to the next one, just out of a, a nice standard. It doesn't have to be output three going to the next one but it just kind of keeps it symmetrical and easier to follow in the long run. So a lot of this system, a lot of the standards you're, you're gonna adapt as you go are basically all about like uh, maintainability because uh, as you might kind of already assume or know, eventually tubes will be everywhere, all over your base. <laughs> and if you can't figure it out when you need to troubleshoot, it's kind of a problem. So that's why we want to adhere to standards. Same as like coding philosophies too, actually, which is kind of interesting. If you do any coding, this might come a little more natural to you because of that type of stuff. But it does, it's not required or anything. It doesn't actually, you know, not matter. Okay, so here's another problem that creeps up every once in a while. Sometimes you get one of these outputs too close to a ceiling and it's blocked and you can't go anywhere. Or maybe you can if you're lucky. I think there's like one little tiny spot right there, but it's still blocked even from there. All right, so what you have to do in this case is just pick it up and place it a little further from the wall or in a different angle or something, and uh, that should take care of it. Let's go back to that out three, which was, oops, it's supposed to be blue. Forgive me, this one's not going to be blue. I don't want to redo the tap. All right, but that resets if you change things. All right, output three, go into this one. Ugh. Output three, going to this one. Trying to trying to keep a decent order going on here. And we're just gonna go all the way to here. I'll put three back up to this top one. I know, not the most exhilarating, but it is required to do this at least once. And hopefully you don't have to redo it too many times in the way. Sometimes it happens, so it's another reason. I'll put three, there's no more, so we are good here stop the tap and you'll see me uh, do like drag this off my hotbar a lot and that's because I don't know if the glitch is still in but there's an off by one error when doing the new right click undo sometimes and it will crash your game so if you think it might happen just drag it off your toolbar and reset the tool and you won't crash so hopefully they fix that or it's fixed by this video it comes out oh I don't know but you'll notice that you're good you'll see the index off by one sometimes all right, so now we've got these kind of ready to go. We just need to finish hooking them up, which I'm going to do very quickly. Uh, just out to their conveyor and the conveyor out to the box. Uh, we're going to just onesie, twosie. I'm going to leave that one empty because there's none and we go over here. And same thing. Let's just get them all in there. This is very satisfying. I gotta admit, like just hooking these up, it's actually quite satisfying. Okay, this one needs to go to output one. 
I'll put two. I'll put one. I'll put two. And also keep in mind, these don't necessarily have to be next to the boxes. They could be like in their own room and then just pipes running out to boxes. So you could hide these adapters and config away from the boxes. I like to keep it next to the boxes because it makes it easy to tell which one's going to which box, which has its advantages. I guess the disadvantages, if people like blow up your TC, they're going to blow up a lot of your conveyors and stuff too. So I don't know, it doesn't, doesn't matter that much, I guess, but I, I prefer to keep them next to the boxes rather than running longer pipes and having to track the right one. But there are advantages to hiding them, which I will get into uh, a little later, or maybe you'll see it in one of my wipe videos, because I always do this kind of stuff for whatever group I'm with. And uh, I don't know, I've been uh, working on some videos. But uh, I've got quite a few wipes that could use some editing, so I don't hardly have the time to edit anymore. So if you know an editor that wants some work, tell them to hit me up, because I have some work. And I do understand it's a big job, a lot of time involved editing videos, so I'm willing to pay the going rate. Whatever that is, I don't even know. Okay, so now those are all good. We need our wiring tool. We need to wire power to everything. Uh, we're just going to chain everything together. You know, we've got this first one going to one watt to this conveyor. We're just going to work with this pass through and just basically like run them all. This will, this will work well for this case. So usually what you want for your whole conveyor setup is a battery that can uh, sustain or a tap that can sustain up to 30 watts, I'd say. Um, kind of giving a few extra wattage there for good measure. Because it might be 10, it might be 15. But as you expand and do more special things, you will just use up a watt here and there doing each special conveyor thing. But right now I think I counted 16, so this should use 16 watts all together. And as long as you've got that, they will all flash red. At some point you might get one that no longer flashes red. Like your chain ends and the conveyor's just not even available to turn on. That means you don't have enough power. So there we go. Oh, one more, I think. Over here. But this initial setup is good. We still need to put all the categories in, which is going to take a minute. I think I skipped one. Yeah, here we go skip that one there we go and now this is also nice because if you want to add another one you just kind of interrupt the chain like for example say I added one right there in a small box or something that I wanted to sort I would just disconnect this go here and just like put it in the chain you know find the empty one that I was going to and boom so it's really easy to add more when you're kind of keeping it in a organized fashion there that's hooked back up Okay, so things are going good. We cooked all that ore. Um, we got our sorters hooked up. These don't have categories yet. Kind of important. Uh, card parts is a weird one. Uh, we're going to just take high quality parts. I don't know if I actually want to mess with card parts. But just assume I put all the high quality, maybe all the medium, and maybe some other stuff on there. The problem with card parts is it's components. So if we go to this one and just say we want the components category, it is also going to take in card parts. So what I usually end up doing is I, I have like a scrap components box and I just custom filter like pipes and tech trash and all the stuff that scraps are uh, scraps for scrap. Yeah, that's the right wording and also scrap. So maybe we'll do that, but I don't want to take forever on uh, setting this all up. So for sake of saving a little time, we're only going to take in like, I don't know, tech trash and scrap here and uh maybe like laptops or something or the computers those, those are worth a lot of scrap oops not that uh scrap or uh, computer and also yeah i don't know but you get the point it kind of takes a little while to set these up but once you get them all set up i would recommend like hitting record on your recording software and just like breezing over them you don't even have to say anything because at some point they will get like wiped or reset or you know you'll get raided and some will get destroyed or something and you won't remember but it's really nice to have a reference is the point or a screen. You could do a screenshot or something too, but I like to do that. You'll see some of my videos like that, where I'm just like, I literally have posted videos of just me documenting my categories, but I do that on my own too, a lot. So, um, oh boy, this is a lot. 
yeah car parts uh wood is just wood i also like to put in the wood box oddly enough um if i'm not custom sorting construction all to one place i put like the pure wood stuff in here too sometimes like the high walls or the or some boxes and stuff and you can see you don't want it to fill up with small boxes so you could tell you say only take three uh and with large boxes you can you know that's just something you can do uh i like to do if it's not handled by another sort already um you kind of do that on your own naturally as you think of things that go well together like with fuel it's usually it's normally low grade right but you probably also want crude depending on your method i'm going to leave crude off because i want to show you a cool thing with the the furnace later speaking of i need to place this refinery don't i place the refinery i'm going to go like that and we get it in the loop it's very easy to add furnaces too i'll show you that real quick you just take just anywhere in this chain where like loops you know and goes to the next one you take the out and just put it on on that one it's it's not we can just even do it from like this final out right here uh let's go with red yeah final out here and there so that'll do it we got it now in the loop so if we put crude in there we'll find that it goes where it's supposed to go it should just show up in there there it is you do have to manually turn this on um i think our igniter's close enough to hit it nice so another thing nice thing about the igniter if you can get it in a good spot is it it'll turn on this uh you, now we also need to throw wood in here which presents sort of another problem and a solution at the same time i don't have any wood let's just get some out of this thing uh okay but i guess i'll interrupt my flow over there because i'm just gonna pause and come back when that's all done i think but i, I at least want to talk about this yeah if you want these ones that take wood to keep working you got to throw wood in so that it transfers and this is actually a great way to make charcoal too as you can do it on this closed system so the closed system the first video is really all you need you know with that closed system this is so useful it's crazy how many people don't hook this kind of thing up and they just struggle their whole life putting wood in furnaces when all you need to do is dump into a box and hit a button and that's it you know all right so i'm going to sort out these categories a little bit and then i'm going to come back to you and we will i will show you how to integrate this furnace into the drop all right let's do it okay i have sorted out all the categories i'm just going to go over them real quick i changed a few things uh, compared to what i was talking about earlier like this car parts box it's just a cloth box we're going to take cloth rope sewing kits tarps uh, seems pretty standard and we turn it on and see if it pulls anything and we got the wood box just plain old wood I'll talk more about wood later uh, when we get to furnace stuff fuel uh, I just put low-grade diesel animal fat uh, no crude here you'll see why in a little bit um, but there are methods where you would would want crude here also you'll you'll notice we're not taking any or at boom box we're taking in all this stuff I'm also gonna add satchel to this this is always if you do this boom box you sort of have to like well, if you do it this way, there's another way of doing it, kind of where you don't have to separate out so much. So, this is a style that adds a lot of customization. You know, if you're doing full categories, usually you have poolers from those categories to like a separate system. But that's a different setup. I, I tend to like this one better, where you custom sort to begin with. It uses less power. It's less confusing. All right. Well, in the long run, it. But the problem here is rockets. That's in the ammo category. Times explosive. That's in the tools category ammo category ammo category tools category so those categories will also try to pull these items so you don't want to use those categories anywhere else so that's that's a thing like this toolbox here you would think you would want to sort tools but we're not going to do that because it would start taking in some of the satchels and stuff uh, so we're just going to take jackhammers chainsaws i also added construction to this and then one hammer would building one building plan because those are i believe are in the tools building plan might not be i don't remember i think hammers in the tools so we need hammer now i like having at least one hammer you don't want to like this is why we have a max uh if we don't want someone to flood our boxes with hammers so it only takes one um that way if we you know we throw a bunch of hammers in here only one of them is going to get sucked in at a time and we can still pull it that's the point is you want to be able to pull it or find it later all right let's turn that boom one on uh, we got sulfur to sulfur i added gunpowder and explosives too sometimes i separate those to another box but just doesn't, doesn't matter they go well together frags just plain old frags this resources box i'm using for high qual because it's got a little high qual symbol on it specifically high quality metals sometimes you can add things to high qual 
Uh, like, I actually often, oddly enough, end up adding leather, just because these are two things that rarely fill a box, so they can kind of fit together in a weird way. Um, but that's up to you. You can do it differently if you want. I do need a place for leather, so I'm just going to leave it there. That's fine. Or maybe I could put it with the cloth. Actually, that's I kind of like that idea. Let's put leather with the cloth. Sure, why not? And then that way we can take it off this one. And let this just be pure high quality. And maybe we'll add stuff later. Like, I don't know. If I don't have like an electric in a construction box, sometimes I'll pull certain items that use a lot of high quality, like small batteries, st uh, stuff like that. And, uh, wiring tools, things that take only high quality to make. Sometimes I sort these, those to boxes depending on my setup. So that's the thing you can do with this. A lot of customization. Electrical, I've just set to electrical. This water box is for food. More about that later because we can actually t uh, take this one out of this and uh, save the wattage later if we want. There's a way to do that that's pretty clever. Uh, if you're hurting for power, charcoal is just plain old charcoal. First aid is only syringes. We don't want any of the other stuff. Components, I've tried to narrow down to scrap stuff. There are more, this is not all of them, but it's just scrap and main scrap components, we'll say. Um, I forgot MLRS and the aiming modules, but uh, those could go here. The aiming modules tend to scrap well, uh, but the rockets, I don't know, you gotta decide. Armor is just plain old clothing. Um, if you, Sometimes I do a like two armor boxes, one with the highest tier stuff, and the other one with like accessory stuff uh, that you would want like hazmats and whatnot so it depends how you want to do armor i've just done it all in one there weapons i often separate weapons into pistol and rifle types so i'll often have two boxes and uh, with ammo i'll often have a main ammo just like this and maybe one other thing like grenades or something um but grenades by default will go to the weapon category so you gotta watch out for that I uh, usually have two ammo boxes, one for like the core ammo, just this basic type, and then one for special types. But right now we're just going with the plain types. Um, if we do the whole ammo category, well, we can't anymore because we have a boom box and it would take some of the boom stuff and it would get awkward. So that's why you got to customize them out. But we're looking real good here, real organized. Stone, just plain old stone. You can imagine it's, it's on there. Okay. And we've already talked about the tool one. Takes and jackhammers and chainsaws only. You could add more to that if you want, but that's it. They're all on, they're all sorting. Anything we throw in here will now go to its appropriate spot. You'll notice uh, I didn't put AK bodies anywhere or rifle bodies. Usually I put them with the rifle weapons. So I guess they naturally would go in components. They are a component, but um, I often put them in that. Oh, 5.5 five, five box. Rifle's body, there it is, okay. So we'll add those, and also why we're at it, we'll get SMG. I often sort these SMG bodies to their own custom, the pistol box, basically. There's also semi body. Okay, we'll go ahead and just get those added. But as, you, as you'll as you go on, you'll see things that like, nothing takes these in to sort them, and you'll want to figure them out and add them somewhere. This usually goes on my additional, uh, ammo box with all the special kinds workbench yeah this stuff i don't know the workbenches are kind of big lockers don't matter that much they're only they're not worth much really from a resource perspective uh but the workbench tier three you'll definitely want in i usually put it with the uh either the tools and construction or with the electrical just depending on where i'm at but you're gonna want to put those in there maybe maybe not tier ones but you definitely want tier two and three i think so there we go now it should take that in okay now we're on to the pooler system okay i'm going to show you a little trick though before the pooler this could go this could happen before your pooler system and it is a way to integrate the furnace i think this is a good spot to show it way to integrate the furnace all right so you have your drop box right and if you do not take an ore or crude the crude just sits there and the ore just sits there right just oh yeah other category should have taken those in but you can imagine any of the stuff you see you that you is sitting in your drop box you can make a category or add it to one of your filters wherever you want it to sort to 
you can be creative about it at this point. I think I've shown that enough. So let's integrate this thing. All right, well, you have a chance here to basically have this be part of the sorting system and it just sorts ores right right into here, right into the, uh, the system. So you don't need this box anymore. This box can go away. And uh, we'll just throw that in the drop box. And it should go where it's supposed to go. Charcoal included, right? There, yep, it's gone. So we can just fully remove this box. And we can now say basically our drop boxes are the smelt from boxes. And the way you do that is you take it off of any of these splitters. Usually I like to have a pre-splitter right here just for some internal stuff. So let's go ahead and unconnect this, put it here. Go ahead and take that extension to that one so that continues to all work as before. And now we got these two drops. We're gonna go red, I guess, and take this one right to the input of what was our closed one before. It's now just hooked up on the drop box outline, which means all this stuff will be conveyed in. So basically we have a little category for it. And this is a nice way to do it. Now the very last out, you take this out and you just put it back into the drop, which is very nice. So it kind of becomes a little loop over here on its own but it is actually integrated in because this drop goes to potentially any of those. And as long as they're on some category, it is going to take the output. And now the problem does become wood here as you throw wood in a drop box. Some things happen like it goes to the wood box naturally, right? But now it's got something else that wants it too. And that's this thing. So you could exclude wood if you never want wood to go in here, or you could do something else clever. Like, uh, you could say, you could just go to this filter and say, I only want to accept 2k wood. So the rest can all just sit in drop boxes and go with the furnaces. And as it gets in there, you push the button, it turns them all on. Or you go on and turn them, yeah. So that should keep getting wood now. You see this wood's just going to keep going up and down as it burns. And this one will cap out at that 2k. So that's one way you could do it. You could go to this wood filter and uh, shorten it down. That's the way I tend to like to do it. This is my favorite way of doing it, is just right in with the drop boxes. The drawback is some sits in your drop boxes and could be stolen. But you know, you always have the other side where they can get to your refineries and steal it. And you can mitigate that by, you know, just limiting the amounts, like only three crude at a time, only 10 wood at a time, or something like that. So you can mitigate the theft from your furnaces, and you can do the same with all the ores. That's an important tactic. If you have a bunch of outside furnaces that grubs might be trying to sneak up to, you do want to limit it they'll still do it but they'll just have to like sit there and really be like you know and you might have some turning off problems if your wood's too low they're just gonna have to do this instead and if they if they take the wood watch what happens it turns off yeah it just turns off if they can keep grabbing this three which might be annoying but at least it takes them a long time you could turn the number down or adjust but uh you know that's just an option there so keep that in mind. But now this is not going to take in any ores because it's not... Yeah, it's you got to add all the ores if you're going to do this. Leaving it blanks, nice for getting started, but do customize it later. It's probably a good idea. All right, so there we go. That is that. Is that. We still do have the pooler system, which I said I was going to hook up, so I'm going to do that. But I th hope you understand the furnace there. So I'm going to hook up the pooler for the to close out this episode and we're going to bring it to this tier three right to a nice spot where we can craft with what we pull it's kind of convenient 
Uh, and that way we can eliminate the need to go down here and pull from boxes. We just type it into this. Okay, so how you do this, you need a bunch of outs. Um, and be careful that this doesn't get mixed up with the furnace. The furnace kind of needs to be its own thing. Um, like that. For that method. Um, the other option for doing it is you take in the ore. Right? The furnace. I guess I should have mentioned this earlier. But you take in the ore. And then you just hook up a pooler. This becomes a pooler. That just takes resources from your system. Kind of like this uh, pooler here is going to be. Same, same deal. All right, well, I'm just going to do this kind of quickly, I think. I'm going to get it to the fear. Putting these on ceilings, I don't know. It's it's all situational, really, but I kind of, I've always liked putting these on ceiling pieces in general. For reasons. Kind of a lot to explain sometimes. And sometimes I'm like, I had this, and I had a good reason, but I don't exactly remember what that reason was anymore, you know? It happens. Alright. So, we now have places to hook up all the outs of these boxes to combiners. We can combine it all in, and then send it out to what we call poolers. They're kind of additional sorters, so you can have these initial boxes just take in full categories, and then have your additional sorters hooked up on all these pooler lines. It takes more power that way, but you do get kind of a, a chonky, you might have like, this is, this is the case where you literally do the 12 boxes for resources and just not split them up, and then later just pull them as necessary. <laughs> so there's, there's that way of doing it, but that's basically what this is. I like to do sorted on the inside and then poolers to pull whatever you need custom. Then you kind of seal off your core inside with all your nice boxes. That's that's a fun way to do it. Alright, we're gonna make these ones yellow. So the general pooler color is going to be yellow. Um, this goes out to now. This is the kind of the weird thing you're, you're reversing. So this one is the, the final pooler, which we probably also want to have on a splitter so we can split off to multiple things, and we might want just like we have with this drop line on this puller line. I don't have it lined up that great here. But we're also going to want to have an initial split kind of internally for internal special cases. Uh, just like we did with the drop line. We probably want to do that thing with the, with the same thing with the pool line. And uh, so the very first one is typically going to go to wherever you want your, your first puller to be or you can start chaining them off. Okay, so we're gonna also hook up this locker. I got this locker over here. We're just gonna put one of those next to it. We're gonna put one adapter. So you can hook up to three different conveyors to each locker. It's pretty nice. If you do all the same, it just repeats on all three. Um, if you like hook it up to a splitter, you know, and then send it out to each. Or you could chain them together, I guess, too. Get them all full multiple of the same set. Um, we'll get to that in a second. Let's keep hooking these up. I feel like I'm making it confusing at this point, but I want to just get the job done at this point for uh, something's sake. Alright, well, let's get a splitter up here next to this one. I usually like to do a splitter per floor as I go up the base, you know, just to have it available a splitter and a drop per floor. And you can kind of work off of that. And usually you won't hit max depth doing that. But it really just depends on your base design. This is supposed to be yellow if we're remembering to color it. We're just going to chain these all together. There might even be a case for doing this one over here first. And chaining it out three to this one over here. Alright, and then we got another chain that can keep going and do it more. I don't know why this is changing color. It's supposed to be yellow. Okay, well, whatever. 
Okay, but now, um, yeah, we're doing this. I'm only going to hook up one here. I'm not going to overdo it. Because you probably want me to pull, like, your best set or something. I usually do a couple different sets. Like, I'll have a grub set and a, and then like, a full-on out set. Yeah. That's usually how I do it. When you guys do, you know, have to let me know. Maybe a scuba set, too, if you really want to get fancy. But keep in mind, it does take one watt per input. If that's not a big deal, you can just kind of keep looping it from where you left off. Or get a separate drop. I usually like to do separate power per floor. But it doesn't necessarily matter. You could put it all on one, it's fine. Alright, we still need to keep hooking these up. Because they don't have enough yet. Let's go to, go to yellow. But at this point, it's just a matter of uh, kind of doing it quickly and getting her done. Up the pipes. We're going to forgo looking good. Cannot build here. Oh, there we go. All right. And just get it done. Remember that one and two go to boxes. Three goes to the next one in the chain. Oh, we got a too close error. If you get an error, swap out the tool, start over. It happens sometimes. One and two to the boxes. Three to the next one. Two to the boxes, three to the next one. We are almost there. Just consent continue in that same pattern. Oh, we got an error on this one too. So we're gonna do the same thing, swap it out. Don't try the undo, you will crash unless they fixed it. And now that is it, so there's no more to hook up here. But we'll just leave it empty and later that can go to another one if we expand on out. Very nice. So now we do have the pooler hooked up. Let's go ahead and say uh, for this one here, let's try to pull a nice set. We'll pull like, uh, we could just say a hazmat to start. And uh, what's it, I guess. Or uh, we could also just say the weapon category just one of it but keep in mind this messes stuff up because if you do this and you try to put another weapon on it it's still going to cap at one weapon so that's kind of an oddity so usually you want very specifics we'll just do the ak assault rifle just one of them make sure you set the max and we want some bullets so we're going to say 0.55 maybe just 128 is good and we want meds or syringes We'll just say like four of those. Okay, so now it's always going to try to pull that into this first slot here. If we've got it in our storage, if someone threw it in a drop box at some point, it should pull it. We don't have one, but we should be able to see if we throw like this stuff in. It will eventually find its way to this locker. So that's kind of the cool thing about this, this system. I think it's cool. I guess the scientist suit doesn't count. Let's just find a hazmat then. So the clothing filter should take it in, and then this should pull it. Probably take about 10 seconds for the round trip. Uh, let's see, we should get it. There it is. Alright. This thing run out of wood again? It did. So. Alright, and this puller 
you know we might just want some basic resources for crafting um, that's typically what you want put a max on this never ever leave these pooler ones uncapped always put a max on it that's like super important if you got one person on the team not setting the maxes it's gonna mess up everybody else trying to use these boxes that's like probably the most important thing about this so to keep that in mind always set a max so we're gonna say like 100 cloth 100 low grade maybe like 500 frags that's good for making meds maybe that people want to craft their armor too so we'll put leather on this and like sewing kits and like uh what else might they use road signs and put up the 12 things anything else and you're good all right, and if it comes to be more, well, you can always change it later on the fly, and you can always add more in other areas. Like eventually, I'll have one under a mixing bench that pulls some mixing bench stuff. That's always nice. Oh, we gotta hook this up to the uh, the actual box. That would uh, make it work a lot better. And these pooler ones, also, you always want to lock your pooler boxes um, because the raiders. If they're unlocked, they can keep pulling and let it refill. But if they're locked, they'll break it and won't pull anymore. So that's another thing to keep in mind is just do that. Just lock them. All right, we don't have any cloth in the system, but as you can see, it's pulling some stuff. And that's the pooler systems. You can put those all around your base. You can run a line to each floor to be able to pull from your main stash. That's the whole point of that. Well, I think we're on a good start. So I thought of another thing, you know, there is the charcoal factory. That is a pretty important system. There's a couple other systems too, like automated vendors. That's pretty important. Um, maybe I'll show that at some point, but basically it is a pooler. And then you have another pooler that pulls to drop boxes for the output, but it's a little complicated. So yeah, we'll, we'll do that one too, but I, we got to do charcoal next. Charcoal's big. Uh, it's always a pain point in every wipe when you set all this up. Um, the the easy solution is to just put a bunch of wood in. That's why I stick with this, is because this way you can just stick a bunch of wood in here. But if you want it on its own system and to work in kind of a clever way, it can do that too. So, uh, and you can kind of do it more in mass better we basically at this point if we wanted to do it in here we'd have to get a bunch of furnaces you know we have to take a bunch of these and just like chain them in this loop and throw a bunch of wood and hit and turn them all on and let it go but is there a better way is there a way where you can throw wood into a drop box and it all just works it doesn't have to do anything special as far as pressing a button and turning them on, it turns on on its own, and it just makes charcoal passively, because you will need that if you're reading it all and setting this up. Uh, so I will show you my favorite way of doing that in the next episode. Stay tuned. And also I think I'm going to show you the trick with the food to not have to sort it in as well. That's pretty cool. Uh, it kind of goes with the furnaces, oddly enough. So, And if you're doing drop boxes in this way, the, the food, you can save a watt and not hook up the food conveyor oh wow pipes going everywhere it looks pretty cool though i'm liking i'm liking the look the colors I'm starting to uh kind of accept my coloring it took me a while to start coloring tubes all right i'm out enough about me let me know what you do with these systems you got anything clever and cool holler and i'll see you guys in the next one peace out